Something I'd like to see you have on your land this year is an assemblage of stands, tree stand locations that you can actually capitalize on either morning or afternoon hunts, maybe even some midday hunts too. The reason for that is because most stands are not good for all day long. You hear about people all day sits every year, backpack, snacks, going out and sitting in your favorite stand all day long. And typically the majority of the time, half of that day isn't effective for deer hunting. And so I want you to think of it as scoring your, your sets. I talked about that in my latest book, All Weather Whitetails, and, and really looking at the morning or evening, looking at a value. And then when you get into the peak rut, looking at morning, midday and afternoon and scoring each one of those and saying, am I in the best stand on the property for this wind, this time of the year, this location, but if you don't have your habitat improvements lined properly, then you're not going to have the opportunity for morning and evening and afternoon sets, uh, midday sets. So I'm using this example right here. Um, and this is a property I went to in Southeast Colorado and designed a whitetail plan a couple months ago. And I go all over the place, be in Wyoming, uh, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, New York this year, New York twice, I believe. Uh, I was already down in Kentucky too. So lots of different states. And I love whitetails. And what I find in every area, whitetails act the same. It's just an application of balance that you need. And I want to see you guys have high powered morning and afternoon stand locations on your land and here are the pieces that we put together on this Colorado property to make sure that happens. Now right now I'll give you a little little history. This this is a river and a little explanation of slam. This is a river right here. It's a big fallow field. They've only land owned the land for a couple years. So they're really getting pumped and going into this, but they've hunted in this area for a couple decades. They live in, in the Denver area and then they travel down to this land right here. A beautiful area. And so I'm looking at this land where we want elk to move, mule deer, and whitetail um, with their main focus is on uh, whitetail with uh, the chance that an elk, uh, an elk will come through. But right now they're, they have a couple food plots back in. This is the river right here. They have a couple food plots back in, in these locations. Uh, there's one here and one here. And then this is open fallow field. And so what happens now is all the, the whitetails and mule deer they're all living back here on their neighbors. They're living across here on their neighbors and over here, they actually cross the river heavily off the corner right here, uh, lots of rub scrapes. There's some islands over here and then big cover back here. So they're really moving a long way. So the deer that are coming on to their feeder locations or their food plots every single day are coming from a long distance off their, their property. So obviously on their property, they're almost all afternoon stands because um, the deer are leaving their property in the morning if they try to go out and hunt right now, they're pushing those deer off. And so they're basically waiting right here, right here, 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 and waiting for those deer, even over here, waiting for those deer to come from off their land, basically an outside in property that I talk about. It's not a good idea. And we want to make this an inside out property. For that, we can put these pieces together and make sure that we create a property that not only has morning and evening stands, but of course, deer that are going to relate to those that property um, and stay on the property so that you can have morning and evening stands so it all starts with there's really a blank slate right now uh, we're taking the food plots as they are right now um, and we're placing them out here uh, to the south we're getting these food plots in and, and we actually have to have some quail strips for them out here so we're adding some other wildlife species that they want to have we're creating a large food plot system here to the south, and then this is surrounded by ag. And you ask, you know, why do we need to do that when there's ag surrounding the parcel, or at least all over on the south side? It's because they can go into that ag anywhere. It's all the same. I want to make sure, and that ag is not consistent. With the ag rotations, they could have crops on one side that aren't there and the, then the other. There could be crops over here, so then these stand locations and bedding areas are doing well. There could be crops over here and these crops are harvested and these stands locations are doing well, these aren't. So you wanna have your whole property working for you and especially in a small property. I believe this was uh, 110 acres right around there, 90 to 110 off the top of my head. So a, a you know, medium sized parcel for what I go to, but in the whole world of whitetails, it's a small parcel. Putting food out away from the woods allows for the opportunity for large switchgrass and diversity plantings. This yellow 
is I want this all rimmed in switchgrass. I want this food plot hidden here. I want the food plot that will eventually be here hidden. And then I even want the diversity that we're creating out here by putting switchgrass pockets in and allowing for early successional growth and tree plantings. I want that to be encased in switchgrass too. There's some open areas here. I want switchgrass in those areas so that we're actually filling in the cover and making sure that it's surrounded by the habitat that's there right now, but we're adding to it to make it thicker so it actually holds more whitetails or has that ability. So as we continually move along, we're actually adding some small, narrow hunting plots back here so that that can facilitate deer movement. We're actually opening up with this yellow line here, making sure that this is heavily thick cover where you see in dark brown here. So there's uh, tamarisk back here and we're thickening that out, making sure deer can move through here. The more we thicken that out, believe it or not, uh, the more we open it up, uh, for example, more we open these areas up and more that we get rid of the thick cover in these lines of deer movement, we're actually creating elk movement back there. The elk are actually moving on this land in the open areas, so we're going to give that to them too. As we're adding the food back here, we're making sure that we're taking advantage of these open areas and we're planting switchgrass in those. And it's a low switchgrass, so it'll only be three to four feet high, but that's gonna be enough side cover for deer and enough to complement the thick cover that's back there. In essence, what we're doing is pulling the food they had in a couple spaces here, we're actually shrinking that food, lengthening it so that it's more of a travel plot and deer just moving through. There's less of an impact on the depth of cover. We're creating a lot more depth out here, a whole lot more depth. So we're, we're giving the deer 15 to 20 acres more depth right here and pushing the food to the outside. As we progress, again, we're adding the quail strips through there, screening lines, more food to the bottom. We need a lot of food here. There's a good deer herd, there's a good elk herd. Um, there's mule deer that come through too, along with the whitetails. My worry is that there's not gonna be enough food in this location in the Southeast Colorado. There's not a lot of hunters, not a lot of pressure. And so, but at the same time, we're not creating summer food here. This is all, all fall food. So we're waiting. In fact, they're, they're suspecting the elk are gonna use the openings out here during the summertime. So. Um, they're, they're, their goal is to have a nice bull come by while they're sitting watching whitetails and sitting in a stand. So we're creating that depth. So after we add the food and align that properly, after we add the depth, after we improve the cover back in the cover, after we create the lines of movement that the deer are going to travel on and reasons why, the thick cover back here, they're going to travel down into this area. Um, we're actually adding fruit trees out here, clusters of fruit trees and uh, soft mass plantings to complement the food sources. Also complements entr entrance and exit stand locations. You see little clusters in here. Once it's all set up, then we have an a, stand, a stand assemblage that creates the opportunity for morning and evening stand locations. So I'll give you an example. Because the cover is back in here and deer might even be saying on the edge right here, then these locations out in the food are obviously um, evening or afternoon stand locations. So you can expect deer to come through here. They have their campsites right here. That's something I, I didn't draw in or you need to know, but the campsite's right there. That's just where it has to be. It's where it's going to be and always be. And that's why we always have to deal with that. They're hunting here. They're blowing their wind back in the campsite. They're hunting here. They're blowing it back in the campsite. They're hunting here. They're blowing it out to open ag here across the ditch. So there's a lot of ways to get in and out, even a micro micro movement area to make sure they're not spooking the deer and of course this is all rimmed in switch grass and and making sure that the deer can't see in or out evening stands evening stand this could be sometimes a morning where you're waiting deer to come off this big food they're out in the ag here they slip through the food and they slip into here and again you're blowing your scent back here so that could be an, an evening stand now there's really good access because when they access these red lines for stand location routes, then they're on the downside of the bank facing towards the river. So they're really hidden from around this area. So they can sneak into these stands. So this could be, depending on if they're spooking deer in this location, this could be a great afternoon stand where they're coming in, blowing their scent back at the river. That's the same through here all the way. There. Again, very good access where you're facing the river when they're walking in, they're not exposing it. So if the wind's going this way, they don't have to worry about spooking deer on the interior of their land. So they can move all the way. That could be an afternoon stand location. That could be an afternoon stand location. That is more morning afternoon stand locations. Anything away from food is more morning. This is a great spot where you come in, their fence line is right here. Gonna create a water hole 
there's a spot where they already crossed the fence in that location. There's some down cottonwoods here. So they're putting a pop-up in the down cottonwoods. It actually, it might even be a redneck ghillie blind, but they're watching that with a bow shot towards that water hole. That's something where they can come all the way around and get into that location, get around the food. They can actually come in from this way, wait for those deer to come back to them. And that could be morning or evening. Morning as they're going back to bedding and evening as they're coming back onto the food source. Definitely morning stands where we're getting into thicker brush back here where there's a potential of spooking deer that are relating to this food plot or that one. Morning stand, morning stand, morning stand. So by pulling the food out to here, we're creating evening stands closer to food. Morning stands away from food. I would use this as a morning stand, that one, and that one too, or evening. Um, and then morning, evening on these corners. So you're creating stands that actually have a purpose. You're saying, I'm sitting in this stand waiting for cruising bucks to come back in the morning with southerly winds blowing out over the water where you're not spooking those deer. So creating that depth with food, adding more depth by changing the complexity and diversity of this field so you actually hold deer out in the field. By doing that, you're pulling does and fawns. They want to bed closer to that food source and that's where they want to bed every single day. And if you're pulling does out of this where somewhere, or even off your neighbor's property, putting them out here, giving them that, that opportunity to bed closer to the food source, then you're freeing up a lot of space back here for bucks. And when you have a long linear movement like this, you bed does and fawns in a linear length. You don't need as much depth because of that linear fashion of the habitat improvements and where your does and fawns are bedding. They're bedding here, 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 here instead of all being stacked back into one portion of cover that relates to one food plot. By keeping the food plots consistent all the way throughout, then you're encouraging that linear, linear movement. You spread your does and fawns out, and that means you have a lot of leftover, spread wide open space for bucks all the way across that linear movement. And then that finally, after you have the food, after you have the cover and that depth, you increase the depth and the cover with, with uh, uh, plantings back here, switchgrass pockets, whatever it might be, hinge cuttings, timber removal, there's a lot of ways to improve that, that cover. Then you finally can create that stand assemblage for evening and morning stands on your property. Even if you only have 400 yards to work with, 350 yards, whatever that depth is, you can do that on 20 acres, you can do it on 10 acres, you can create stands with a purpose. And then when you sit all day, instead of sitting in the same tree in a morning stand, where the deer are actually leaving that position and going towards food in the afternoon and it becomes a zero out of 10 or a two out of 10 stand in the afternoon, you can actually flip around, hunt a morning stand, go back out, come all the way over here, hunt an evening stand, hunt different buck patterns. And it gives you that stem, sand assemblage where you can actually have some strategy on your land. You can protect a large core where you're not spooking deer out of. If you do that on a small parcel. You can do that on 10 acres, 20, 50. 110, 500, sometimes on those larger parcels, you can have, you even have different sides of the road or cabin, so you can create multiple movements or multiple sections of movement. And that's the way that I find you can hone in on a target buck and shoot your target box over a 10 year period, 80% of the time. It's proven for many decades for me, and I know you can do it too this spring, summer, and fall as you plan your ultimate dream, whitetail hunting and herd quality herd and habitat management parcel.